Hello, I'm here to demonstrate Windows 11 running on actual hardware with a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. Here is the actual unit. Um, so it doesn't run, doesn't use any virtual machines, no trickery, nothing like that. Everything is stock Windows running all on hardware with no software fixes. So if you fresh installed Windows 11 on this hardware, it would work perfectly, and that's exactly what's going on here. So, to get started, there is not a lot of documentation on how exactly to do this because its use cases are fairly limited. There's no like a list of compatible hardware, nothing like that. Um, some of the hardware I actually just used and guessed. I got hardware and I would just basically, it was a crapshoot to see if it would work or not, right? I'll buy this motherboard and if it doesn't work, then I have a, a motherboard that works but I don't have any use for. Um, this is only the second motherboard. I, well, kind of second, more third that I used on it, um, which is a little surprising that I got it first, almost very close to first try. Um, I know of two motherboards that support this, but there's much more than two. Um, there's likely hundreds of motherboards that support this. There's just no definitive list anywhere on which ones work. So the only ones I know of are this one and another one that I have. Um, so what are the main challenges of doing something like this? So first of all, you have to get a drive that works. Um, there's there's two options for getting drives. Um, both options, you know, involve you buying one on eBay. Um, but there's two types of drives that are generally for sale. Um, there's drives that are listed as working tested that cost a lot, and ones that are listed as unknown unknown functionality. Essentially, the the person the the owner doesn't have the ability to test the drive, um, and so. You can get those for a lot cheaper, but you may end up with a dead drive. I did that for both of my drives. I ended up with one bad drive that I may be able to fix in the future. Um, it's not a priority, and the, this is the second drive I purchased. Um, it was listed as unknown, works fine, straight out of the box, uh, which I was very happy about. It's a uh, half height one, it's because it's everything's common. It still fits in this um, ATX case. It's not a fancy ATX case. Your case choice really doesn't matter. I just need something to have, you know, hold it all together. Um, the the main, the other things you need besides this, um, you're going to need a motherboard. That th this is this is the main. This is the tricky part. Is the motherboard surprisingly? You're gonna need a motherboard that has a 34 pin floppy disk header the bios must support five and a quarter inch drives and it must be able to have a cpu that is 64 bit compatible um the tricky part though that that's that's i mean that's really the hard part um this is uh i believe it's an amd it's it's an amd Athlon 64 2x 5400 plus CPU. It was one of the first dual core 64 bit uh, processors available. Um, re really, to run Windows 11, obviously you need a 64 bit CPU because Windows 11 does not come in 32 bit uh, versions anymore. So that was that's a little bit of the tricky part, but really the extremely hard part. And the part that there's no documentation online is you need a motherboard with the correct physical connections and a BIOS that natively supports these drives. That is one of the hardest things to find. If you, a lot of the times you'll find a motherboard that, let's say you find one that has the correct um, headers to plug this drive in. Um, the standard 34 pin floppy header. It, more often than not, the BIOS only supports uh, the three inch disks. 
and then you're stuck because these are not three inch discs that just straight up won't work. The other issue is you'll get one and you can't, you'll find a motherboard that you can plug this drive into, the BIOS supports it, uh, but the CPU, the type of CPU you can install isn't 64 bit and you need 64 bit to run Windows 11. So you have to get all those three things. 64 bit, you can, you can use a 64 bit compatible CPU. It has to have a floppy header and the, the motherboard must support five and a quarter inch drives. Once you find that, it assembles pretty much like a normal computer. One thing to note that most people mistake is they, they think uh, floppy disks drives plug in with an IDE cable. An IDE cable is 40 pins and all floppy disk drives use 34 pins. IDE, IDE is not at all compatible. There's no commonality. You cannot plug a floppy disk into an IDE connector, period. I'd like to demonstrate the physical hookups in a little bit more detail before I proceed. Um, because this information isn't, isn't, it's all online, but it's not just in an easily digestible format. So, I have three drives, or sorry, two. I have this one, which is a, it's just a normal desktop, uh, three and a half inch drive. Um, the faceplate's gone, but that doesn't matter for purposes of this demonstration. I also have this five and a quarter inch drive that doesn't work. Um, it was the one I bought before this one. See? There they are. Um, but I'll show you this. I also have an IDE cable, which this cable does not work with these drives, but I'll explain that in a minute. So these, these are the drives. I brought over a three and a half inch disc, just a little bit for comparison. Um, again, this drive, it just doesn't have the face plate, but it still works fine. Right, it goes in. Is it like so? Right, so these are these are the two types of, you, there are eight inch ones, but these are the ones you'll encounter um, when uh, building a system like this. So the three and a half inch drive, they generally use um, this type of connector. This is a 34 pin floppy connector. Five and, five and a quarter inch drives, um, they use, they generally use this. It's a type of edge connector. Um, now, while it looks much different than the one used on this, it's the same. Physically, it's they're the same. Um, what I mean by that is the cable I'm using in here to connect this drive. It it's it lets you either plug into this or this because both of the, the connectors are the same. Um, the type of connector that will be on your motherboard will look like this. Um, again, 34 pin, it'll look like this. Um, so when you plug in the cable that connects into this end, this type of connector, it will plug in like this. So this, all you need to do to go from this to this is just a, it's a special floppy cable. They sell them on Amazon for around 15 bucks. Um, again, for demonstration, because I get asked this question a lot is, will, can I hook this up with an IDE cable? No. This is an IDE cable. This is a 40 pin IDE cable. They are physically different size connectors. They, you, you cannot run an IDE cable to a floppy disk drive because the floppy disk drive is co is is controlled by a, con a physical controller chip on the motherboard, which is not part of the IDE standard. So again, physically different. You cannot connect a floppy disk drive via IDE. It's a completely different system. The confusion generally stems from the cables being the same. Um, as you can see in this system, this, the hard drive I'm using uses IDE, which is this blue cable, and the floppy disk drive is using this gray ribbon. That's where the confusion generally stems from, uh, but it is important to note. So, 
The only other uh, difference in hookup is just the power supply. Um, these generally use a standard Molex connector, where these use mini Molex. You can um, most most power supplies either won't come with it. It'll be an adapter. All you need to do is get um, is get an adapter. There, a couple bucks if you don't have any. But that's the important part. You need a. You cannot connect these with IDE, and you will need a special cable to do so. And by that I mean connect to this type of motherboard. So what is exactly is going on in this system? Um, the motherboard is nothing too special. Um, I'll put a model number in the description of the video if you would like to find this exact model. Um, the the one thing this doesn't matter for this to build a system like this. This is this. The motherboard just happens to have this feature. The motherboard itself has a video card built into it that's not part of the CPU. Um, it's some aimed, it's some Radeon like 3000 series card. It's again, it's not, it's not required. You can you can use any video card for this. Video card isn't important. I could this has a PCIe 16x slot. You could you could throw in a, you know a. A 1050, a 30, a 3090 if you wanted. It, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just using the onboard card because, you know, there's nothing graphically intense happening, so it works fine. Um, power supply. It's it's nothing special. It's just a power supply that I had laying around. Your power supply really doesn't matter in this case, just as long as it can... It, it plugs into the, the motherboard because older motherboards can have 20 and not 24 pin um, uh, motherboard hookups. So it's just worth noting that the power supply you get will plug into this. Um, these five and a quarter inch drives just use a Molex cable, which any modern power supply should still come with. Um, let's see. Move my camera over here. <clears throat> There's a lack of cable management going on. Uh, you can cable manage this, but. Here is the hard drive I'm using. Again, your the type of the type of storage you use is pretty irrelevant. Um, you could use an SSD if you wanted. This is just a 120 gigabyte hard drive I had laying around. Um, it uses IDE. Uh, it doesn't that doesn't matter. Um, previously, I had a SATA drive hooked up. That's not really super relevant, but it is just worth pointing out. Um, right now, it has I believe. Three gigabytes of RAM installed. There is room for more. Um, up top is the actual drive, and I'll zoom in a little bit closer. Actually, I'll pick up the camera so you can see the type of connector I'm using. So, turn on the flash. So, here's the Molex power connector, and here is the edge connector. That's what I showed you on the, the drive I had sitting out. Um, and this, right across from it, is if you wanted to plug into a three and a half inch drive. Um, it just give, This type of cable gives you the option to plug into a three and a half inch or, two, or five and a quarter inch. Um, and there's another, if you follow the cable around, there's another edge connector right there. Let me set this down. This cable, the 34 pin floppy cable, plugs into the motherboard right there. Um, besides that, there's <clears throat> really nothing else in in this motherboard that is, or in this whole system that's worth mentioning. It's just a cheap ATX case, a power supply, the correct type of motherboard, the drive, and a hard drive. Um, Just for demonstration, I'll show each side. Uh, I, th this motherboard didn't come with the rear panel uh, shield. What are you gonna do? Um, I don't have any cables running on this side. And the front looks like this. Um, this type of drive. Put on a five and a quarter inch disc. Close it, it works. When you eject it, it 
pushes the disc out a little bit for you to grab and take out. But again, there's nothing too special um, physically about the hardware. It just has to be compatible. Yeah, everything just has to be compatible with each other. It's again, 64-bit CPU, a motherboard that has a floppy controller and physical header, as well as a BIOS motherboard that supports uh, five and a quarter inch drives. Other than that, you don't need anything different. You just need to install Windows 11. Um, obviously none of, this, none of this hardware is listed as compatible. Um, besides maybe like the RAM, uh, it's obviously easy to get around that you can just install Windows 11 with the uh, media creation tool. It'll bypass every restriction and install it on. Um, for a system this old, a lot of the hardware is um, mid 2000s, uh, apart from the drive, which is older. Uh, it just takes a little while to install just because things take a while on it. Um, uh, after Windows 11 is installed, you go through the setup, it behaves like any other Windows 11 computer. I haven't really noticed any issues with it. So let's go hook this up and power it on. Okay, here we go. We have everything set up. We have a monitor plugged in, a keyboard, and a mouse. Go ahead and power the computer on. May take a minute. There we go. There's the Windows 11 boot screen. Give it just a minute as it is loading on hardware that is not at all compatible officially with Windows 11. Here we go. So here is the Windows 11 lock screen. Um, I'm going to input my password so I'll pause the video. Um, the only thing to note is the this border around the actual display is just a cause of the onboard video being just old. Um, it says it's running at 1080p, the monitor is 1080p, but um, you see the mouse it only goes to these corners. Um, it's just a quirk of the onboard um, graphics card being a bit old. And we are into Windows 11. So things are still loading up because it is running on old hardware. Um, and I will quickly go into Device Manager, Task Manager, uh, File Explorer. We'll see how everything showing up as normal. Um, there is no disk installed right now, but I will be putting in this Sony. Um, it's a double-sided, high-density, double-track disk. Um, it's the kind I've been using on it. In the BIOS, you can select between certain ty disk types. Um, I have a couple other disk types, but this is... I have many more of these than I do all the other ones combined, so I generally have it set to this, which would be good for a demonstration because it's 1.2 megabytes, so we'll do some file transferring and stuff like that. So I will bring us a little bit closer to the monitor itself. You can also see the hardware in there. There's a little blue LED fan, CPU fan spinning. I'll go into You can hear it seeking a little bit. <laughs> this PC, and what's, I, what I think is one of the coolest parts about this is Windows 11 has a brand new, updated five and a quarter inch floppy icon because they updated all the icons. Still a new icon because technically they are still supported, which is very cool. Um, so, go here, device manager. It takes its time, being an old system. I think that worked. I'll shrink that down for now. You can see the onboard video card, which is a 
Let's see what uh, what is it actually? It is just oh, it doesn't even show up here. It's uh I believe it's a Radeon 3000. It's in the 3000 series. Um, okay, floppy disk. These are the two parts. This is the floppy disk controller. Um, it's just the part, the chip built onto the motherboard that controls um, the, the drives itself because the drives don't control themselves. They get controlled by a part on the motherboard. Um, here's the drive. It's the only one plugged in. Hang up right here, everything else. Let's see. Let's go to task manager. Here is our CPU. It is an AMD Athlon 64X2 5400 plus. Uh, dual core, just all around. Not very good. We have 2.5 3 gigs of RAM installed. Uh, it's only showing up 2.5 here though. Not really sure why. Um, there's that terrible IDE hard drive. That's basically the reason why it's all slow. Um, I don't have this hooked up to Wi-Fi right now. It's, there's no Wi-Fi on this board. You could hook it up to Wi-Fi, no issue, though. I've done it before with a USB Wi-Fi adapter. I don't have it here right now, though. But let's go back here, and we'll do some file copying transfer, and I'll show off the whole thing. All right, on this USB drive, I have an image, and we'll just use that for copying purposes. It's not been on this computer at all yet, so it'll be fresh for this computer. So, there we go. I'll put that in here. Give it a minute to find it. There it is. Go into it. Um, I did use this drive for setting up Windows on a different computer, so it's got the media, but our image is this one. So I'm going to copy that to the desktop, just like that. This thing, you can close that. I'll actually, I'll reopen it, but I'll reopen it to uh, this PC. So we'll take out that di uh, that drive. There we go. Here's one of our five and a quarter inch discs. Put it in, we'll close it. That's it, that's all we have to do. Now we can access the disc. So I will, I'm going to full screen it and then open it. So here are the contents already. Um, I'm going to do this and let's copy this image to the disk. There we go. Uh, the image is now on disk. Uh, if we back out to this PC and go to properties and take a look at the disk properties, it's, this is its formatting, this is the total storage you use for whatever. Um, we can do error checking, we can check for errors, there should be no errors, all these disks are in pretty good condition, obviously none, but everything is as it should be here. So, go back and do it, and use our image, go we'll access it. Sometimes it gets corrupted, so I'm going to just put it back on quick. I may have grabbed one of the two kind of iffy disks I have, but here it is again. There we go. That's the image I chose. Um, we can go see its file info. The file info is, it's almost an HD picture. Um, it's 148 kilobytes. Um, no, let's get back to here. I'll throw the original image away. Just for, just to show everything is indeed working. Here's what we sorted on. If we were to access this now, 
it tells it tells us that there is not a disk in there. So we'll cancel. Put this disk in. Close it. And then we will go again and access the drive. There we go. And there are our files. Here's our photo. We'll open it. There we go. Everything works just like normal. It's kind of cool to see it interacting with normal File Explorer. Um, <clears throat> one of the cool things I've done is I compressed a video to fit on one of these because they're around 1.2 megabytes and you can indeed play video off of one of these disks. Again, everything works as intended or we can like, we can right click here. Uh, you can scan everything if you wanted. That also works on it. As you hear the access sound a bit. Obviously, no threats. Because I've been the only one to put things on these uh, disks. So I will pair a couple of other files to transfer, show off, and then I will end the video. Okay, I have two files for us to play around with. <clears throat> one is a larger image file uh, that will take up a good chunk of the disk. Um, it's around 0.8 megabytes, and then I have, what's this one, and then I have, uh, it's uh, files from a game, and it's a lot of small individual files for transferring. So, here's the disk we used earlier. We'll put it in, and because I want to maximize the space on it for this, um, I'm going to format it. Hmm. Sometimes it doesn't like to be formatted, but that's okay. We can just go on and erase um, the contents of it. It's the same one we used earlier. One. And. Yes. So now we should have a full. Um, an empty disk. So properties, here we go. Um, there's just a little bit of residual stuff on there. Um, we have a megabyte remaining. So, yeah, empty. We'll first put on this image, we'll copy it. There we go. Our image is copied. We can open it. There it is. Um, we can go to File Info. That's the full thing. It's a pretty big image. It's um, let me get closer. It's a, definitely a 4K image, so you you can store this stuff just fine on it. We'll refresh um, the File Explorer, so we'll open up fresh copy. Essentially the disk has been taken out but back in, so we're not loading it from memory. Here we are. Open it up. And there's our image. It's still loading in some data, but effectively that's it. You just have to seek through a majority of the disk, however. And that's it. So we can close that and let's copy on. Uh, here's, here's what's in here. It's a bunch of small files. So it'll be individual files in a folder. I am going to have to get rid of this image though because it, the, it won't have enough storage space.
and our files and album copied over. So I'm going to erase them from our desktop. Back to here, and I'll take out the disk, put it back in, essentially giving it a fresh slate so nothing will be loaded into memory anymore. Here's our disk. Let's see if we go on here. No disk installed. So we'll recopy those files back from the disk onto the hard drive. There they are. And we'll copy them over. Re read speed is much faster than write speed. And we can access them. And there they are. There's all of our files. Again, I think this is just fantastic, especially the new icon. But for those who want to watch the drive work up close, I will copy some files too. After deleting the disk so it's free. I think it's interesting you can actually hear it marking the individual files as uh, marks for deletion. But the disk is empty. I'll wait for it to stop. That's the activity light. Here we are. I'll access it. And now I'll copy files. And there we are, four copied files. I'll do it one more time, but instead of copying files, I will be uh, reading files. And that's it. I hope this video has been a little informative on how to go about doing something like this. There isn't much information, and I get questions quite a bit on my previous videos, but those weren't as well done and well explained. And with Windows 11 coming out and me putting on this machine, I figured it was the right time to do a new video, a bit higher quality, um, a bit, bit better presentation, stuff like that. Um, if you have any other questions on this system or how to do this stuff in particular, please leave a comment. I'll try and reply to each one of those um, that have a question because something like this is pretty cool and it's, there's no good information online about how to do it. So I'm happy to provide my experience on the whole ordeal. Um, with that out of the way, we can shut down the computer and I will leave it at that. So thank you for watching this long video uh, and if the next version of Windows comes out I'll try and get it on this machine again. Thank you for watching.